Okay, so although this uh, video is going to be for a specific client, um, I wanted to go ahead and utilize it as an educational video uh, for customers that have just purchased a boat or in the process of purchasing a boat and wanting to know a little bit more about the break-in period. Uh, this is a 2021 Bennington 24 LX. Uh, it's a stern radius model. It's got a 250 Yamaha show. It's got the 32 inch center tune. Uh, so we're just gonna jump into the break-in. You do have a 10 hour break-in on this motor. Uh, they're wanting you to vary your throttle through all ranges of RPM to really get that uh, motor broke in properly. They don't want you to go out and run it wide open. Uh, it is acceptable under a minute at a time, but just not to do it very often. Uh, I'm not going to take the whole hood off and go through a service. I would always recommend, you know, just having the dealership service it for you. But you have a clip here, one on the other side and one on the front to take off, to check your oil and uh, to be able to top it off. You have your trim here to be able to trim it up and down. I do have the battery switch off, so it's not gonna show it right now. Um, but this piece comes off here to be able to get to the upper unit uh, oil to drain it. And then you also have to drain your lower unit and uh, change your filters. And that's about all that it's going to uh, consist of. You will trim it down all the way and it will self drain. So you do not have to winterize these outboard motors like you do uh, an inboard boat. Um, you just, again, trim it all the way down, let it drain out, and then turn the cap on the bottom to make sure the oil is coming out instead of water. And then you are good for the year. We recommend a 20 hour first service, uh, which is going to, you know, just get some nice clean oil in there just in case there could be any metal or something like that from it being a brand new boat in that break-in period. But after that, it is once a season or uh, every 100 hours, whichever comes first. We'll go ahead and climb on up in it. So in this particular boat, it does have dual batteries, one under each side. We put them here in the back to maximize storage in the front parts instead of just putting them both under this one side. Uh, in this one, you're gonna have a switch, which is one, two, or one and two. Or completely off. Uh, I would recommend picking one or the other if you're going to sit in a cove and listen to music or something like that. So if you run, say, say now it's on battery two, say you run battery two dead, you can um, switch it over to one, start it, put it to one and two, and it will actually charge back up battery two for you. So going over your helm, this has the large touchscreen Simrad. We are going to go over the gauges. They do have their own breakers for each. With turning on your RGB lighted system, your exterior and your mood lighting comes on, but as you can see, nothing is lit up yet. You have to push this button and hold it in till it lights up. And as you can see, it turns it on there. And then as you turn it, it's going to change your colors. And there's a few different settings. I think you can push it maybe twice and it'll turn automatically for you. Uh, when turning it off, if you notice, see it's still lit up. Even if you turn it off and it looks like it is shut off, your power is still on. So you need to hold that on until it goes off. Uh, an important part of that is if say you're out for the night and you're, you're finishing up and you flip these off and you leave this one on, but you've not turned off your battery switch, um, it could run your battery dead. You do have a built-in bilge pump, which you can set to auto or on. That's going to be in this center tune. Uh, so for instance, if you get out on the water and you get, you know, stuck out in a rainstorm, you can flush out that water that's going to uh, get into that center tune. You're gonna have a few different accessory switches. I'll have to kind of play around with it and figure out which one is to the Simrad and radio. Okay, so this one is gonna control the Simrad and the radio. 
as we're letting it turn on, you do have a horn. You have nav and anchor. So when you flip this on, it is going to turn on the red and green light along with your anchor light. Or you can flip it down and turn on just the anchor light. So for instance, if you're setting in a cove listening to music and it's getting late and you want to just have your anchor on but you're not actually going underway so you don't, uh, you don't need your nav. You will have a manual on this, so I'm not going to go too in depth. Um, they change constantly, so <laughs> I'm probably not the most educated on it anyways. Um, but you're going to have your uh, mile per hour, your foot temperature, as far as like depth, um, your hours. The hours won't register until it is started and it's actually accumulated an hour. This one has not. Um, whenever you go back in to your main screen, you do have a split screen option where you can show multiple screens at once, which is a really nice feature to have. Or you can go in, there's Waypoint. Uh, whenever it's started and programmed, you're gonna have a Yamaha Smart Gauge that's gonna sh uh, show you all of your, like your RPM and, and everything like that. There's also down imaging. You do have a full navigation system as well within the SimRad. So again, nice, bright, clear, uh, you know, where your fuel is going to be at and everything like that. Uh, you do have the LED docking lights on the front of the boat. And then again, you have two extra accessory switches. These do have power to them, as you can see, but there is nothing hooked up to those. So say you wanted to add a sub and amp or something like that, you can utilize. Uh, in here, you're going to have your cigarette lighter and your USB and auxiliary port. And it does have the lock, which as you can see, the key inside. You will also have, as you can see, there's a key here that I've not put uh, onto the fob yet, but it lets you lock in here and you have dry storage underneath your helm. You also have plug-ins on the front to 20% uh, cutouts that's going to let you charge your phone here as well. Uh, going over just quickly on this boat, uh, when you're hauling the boat underway, I would put your cup holders underneath seats. I would take your table off, put it underneath a seat or under your helm, uh, just to re reduce the risk of something flying out. Uh, you do not need to travel with your mooring cover on the boat it is specifically for mooring meaning if you are traveling down the road and your say your pole comes loose and it rips the cover or puts a big hole in your seat bennington will not cover that it is specifically for mooring um, you do also have a travel position for your bimini top as you can see, it's in, you know, it's in the upright position now. You'll unzip it through the center, grab it and fold it forward to open it, locking in this leg into here. And it is acceptable to run it, you know, wide open with that bimini top open. Whenever you want to put it down in travel position, you're going to hit this, which it's not even locked in now, but hit that down and bring the smaller leg out and your whole entire bimini top will lower down into a rest position uh, just to lower that, you know, maybe to not be as likely to hit a tree, a uh, limb, or, or something like that. Here you've got access to show your, your fuel tank and then your gas is gonna be put in. Where is that? Oh, here. It will come with a full tank of gas. Um, I believe that that's really going to do about the majority of the video. Again, just to summarize, 10 hour break in, 20 hour first service uh, is recommended, and then 100 hours or once a season. We do recommend around October-ish, you go ahead and put a good uh, fuel stabilizer in it. So if you're not going to run it for the rest of, you know, the off season, if you're in an area where it gets cold like it does here in Kentucky. Um, I would recommend though at least letting it 
run once with that fuel stabilizer so we can get all the way through the fuel lines uh, and stuff like that. But other than that, it, you should just be able to, to start it up and go.